Ladies and gentlemen, you have all gathered in this hallowed classroom to hear various politicians spew facts and opinions, trying to appeal to your sense of justice. Okay. There is scientific proof that the climate is changing and will always change. However, there is not much that the government can actually do to help this cause. Mock Congress is a 10-week roleplay simulation that we typically engage in in the spring semester. And it is a vehicle by which the students do a deep dive into the legislative branch. The fact that some people believe that the government should rule over a woman's choice regarding her pregnancy proves that women are still not treated equally. Obamacare is a disaster. As a gay male, LGBTQ rights are extremely important to me. For the students in this mock Congress unit, they're playing the roles of congressmen and women as well as senators. And in taking on that role, they're being asked to espouse kind of the ideals, the values, the orientations of the person that they're playing. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. We are here today to discuss the Planned Parenthood bill. Senator Roundhorse. Okay, I'd like to argue the Eighth Amendment, freedom from cruel and unusual punishment. It's cruel and unusual punishment to kill a child. It's. Excuse me, senators, quiet down, Senator Gore. I know how I feel about things, and there's no point in just reiterating everything everyone else around me feels. And so I really wanted to challenge. And also, I think that the best way to form an articulate and good opinion is through hearing other people's opinions. And then you can say, well, like, actually, that's wrong because of A, B, and C, instead of being like, well, it doesn't sound right. Students have to kind of grapple with their own internal thought process around, are they comfortable, potentially, playing a senator that espouses political views and values that are very different from their own. If you're, you're defunding the most, like, the, the largest provider of abortions, where would you expect people to go? Is there going to be a government agency that provides abortions <coughs> to those people? Or are you just going to say, find your own way? Like, who's going to do that? Well, I think that it's supposed to be inferred that there obviously will be a way provided to get an abortion. But if it's, it's not written, if you're gonna, are you gonna say that you're gonna create a government program? If, if so, then why is that not on the bill? This bill violates the, 19th, the Ninth Amendment, the right to privacy, which allows for anyone to have their own private records and to be able to make their own decisions about their medical care. Just as they need to form kind of an identity as a senator, they also are required to form an identity as a party. And within the party, they have to come up with a platform statement, what their goals are. Take out. Don't take out any. I can't take it out. We have Don't to keep it in. That's our push. I think we should do we that. We have to keep it in. I can't. Because I'm not taking it. I'm not taking out a portion. I'm not just taking it. Just do the equal thing. But it's the only Emma's way gonna, it Emma's pro reproductive rights, therefore we tie it and it gets sent to the house. Reproductive rights isn't the same always. It's we used like, to do the debates about like, whether ancient Egyptians should have mummified people or like whether the Three Gorges Jam should have been built. And this was like, you know, this could actually like change something. Like this could eventually be our country. Like this is laws. Like the Three Gorges Dam was already built. The ancient Egyptians did mummify somebody. There's no way that we can change that, but this we could actually change. We have like a power over the world kind of in that way. Okay, Senator Anchor, are you in favor of the Planned Parenthood bill? I am not. You, you say yay? Not. Yay. Or yay or nay? Nay. Nay. Senator Del Deo? Nay. Of course. Senator Fig? Yay. Senator Gorin? Nay. Senator Katz? Nay. What? What? Nay. What, what did nay. Senator Katz say? Nay. 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 I thought it would be interesting to play the part of a moderate Republican because I would still, she still had many like democratic views that I could support, but also she had some things that were opposing and so it was slightly easier to play than a staunch Republican. I guess the hardest thing was like knowing when to side with the Republicans or when to side with the Democrats because 
I couldn't always, like I couldn't always just Google what would she vote, and so I would have to think like what actually makes sense. Do I vote with the party or against it? It's a tie, yeah. yeah. So it's going to go to the vice president to yeah. Yeah. vote. But we don't know who your vice president is. So oh, I, I believe. I believe. But wait, 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 wait. I'm calling up Mike Pence right now. Hello? Yes, you're very conservative and you're the vice president. Okay, understandable. Okay. I think, I think we passes. have this one in the bag. I think we have this one in the bag. Eighth graders, 13 and 14 year olds, are in that kind of developmental place in their lives when they're beginning to think about who am I, what do I want to be when I grow up, um, what's important to me, um, what are my responsibilities, right, as, as a human being kind of on this planet, uh, what rights do I want to um, fight for. The government should guarantee a minimum standard of living i.e. provide a guaranteed minimum income. So we won't have income. poor, we won't have like homeless people outside. Maybe we wouldn't have homeless yeah. people. Maybe we wouldn't have hungry people. So the question is, through your eyes, do you agree with this? Do you disagree with this? Would your senator agree with this? Yes, yeah, Senator Malloy. I think this is too far. I think <laughs> the government should not be doing this level of handouts to the people. I don't think it'll really oh. fix like the issue of homelessness because I think like there are enough jobs for everyone in this country even if they are like not the best jobs in the world and I feel like it just becomes like a money hole for the government to pour stuff into and it doesn't fix problems that well and I, I just also think people should be more independent anyway so. Okay so you're speaking as Jake. Yeah. And you're also speaking as Senator Malloy. Yeah. Uh, Sammy. Okay. Um, I think what Jake was saying, how it should be more on self-reliance, is that's really just not realistic for a lot of people. Because I think it's easy to say that when you grow up like this. But a lot of people, they grow up in areas where they live on the street with their parents. Or they're in abusive homes. They started working when they were eight. So it's not realistic to say, rely on yourself when everyone is being raised to such different standards and given such different opportunities. So, Sammy, would you say that if we look at our preamble and this goal to ensure domestic tranquility on the level of finances, on the level of economics, are we failing as a country? Completely. We're you feel that we are completely place. failing. So then, as individuals, citizens in this society, and also within this role, do you have the wherewithal? Do you have the passion? Do you have the commitment to address this? Right now, um, we're trying to pass a bill against abortions, which is sort of ironic um, because that's like the thing that I disagree most with my senator on. I'm trying to pass an education bill with the education committee. This year we got to pass an equal rights amendment that I was writing and I actually thought that was really important because it puts women in the Constitution, which, and they're not in there, except for like the no vote shall be abridged on account of sex. Currently, I'm working on a bill um, around racial profiling and police brutality so that um, alliances between communities and police officers and stations are built. The perspective taking that's required, right, in, in mock Congress, um, I think it poses a lot of challenges, but also exciting opportunities for some pretty profound transformation to happen in students' thinking. I think that this activity really helped me become more open-minded because I feel like if I hadn't like, played a Republican, I wouldn't have really understood like, the views that they have. And I think that's, that, that's part of the reason why like, people are like shunning each other and like not talking to people because they don't understand the other person's beliefs and are just judging them based on stereotypes. However many par parties you have, like everybody's gonna disagree on something. And so I feel like once you like are able to understand the beliefs and respect them, I feel like that's when like progress gets made. When we think of politicians, like especially the Republicans, we don't really see people. We see like the stereotypical Republican who like votes against women's rights or whatever. But like my, I was playing 
a Republican who was all for women's rights, just not like abortion. Um, so I think it was kind of hard to balance all of that. Like we had to get into character, not just how we think of the government. We had to like become a role.